Hi, this is Tim. In this lesson, we're gonna show you how to control a discrete output based off of a specific set point and a span. In our previous lesson, we showed how to control an output based off of a start and a stop signal. But a lot of times, people only wanna enter one value. And we can do that using one value and a span to calculate our second value. Note that this is an excerpt from a live stream, so it is not perfect. So this works really well when someone wants to input a start and a stop. Now what I see happen though, and you know, some people you just have to deal with this on, is especially on temperature, somebody will say, I want exactly 350 degrees. Well, there's no such thing as exactly 350 degrees. It's, um, it's going to be a plus or minus something. Okay, but all right, let's get this out of here. So let's just cancel this edit and put it back like it was. But okay, let's say somebody says that, and it, yeah, it will be, it'll be, oh, let's just make it a chiller actually. Um, somebody has a chiller and they, they want to regulate something to exactly 350. So just for the exercise, let's make sure we understand how to change the scale in here. So if we go back, to the, whoops, where'd it go? I'm really struggling with my screens here. They're the wrong direction. Okay, so remember, all we're gonna do is change these where these two values were to whatever we want. So, could you not use the PID? Hey, you wouldn't need a PID for this, Vincent. Not for the, um, not to do the scaling. We can do it with some calculate. And that will, that'll be a fun exercise. I'm gonna do that one. Um, because yeah, we can get into some, we can do some fun math and I like doing some fun math occasionally, not that often, but occasionally, but okay. So mainly here, let's change this a little bit. Cause I just said, we're going to make a chiller. So let's make our scale in zero to a thousand. So mainly this 23.1, we're going to change to a thousand just to give us something else. So we'll go over to our program. We're going to go up here. And where we have 23.1 right here, we're going to go to 1,000. Also, this light flashing back and forth on me is kind of bugging me. So let me show you. Actually, let me show you a couple things on that. I'm getting ready to turn it off. But while we're at it, let's say that we're watching for something. And all of a sudden, we see it. And that moment we see it, we can hit the OK button. We can freeze this or pause it right where it's at. So it's at 11 milliamps now, and it's not moving. And then I can hit the OK button again. And I can resume simulating. So sometimes when you're trying to capture something really fast, that's a very useful feature. But okay, for now, I'm just going to hit the cancel button. We're going to get out of all this just so that we don't have to see that thing going up and down. But all right, let's go back here. Okay, so that's going to give us 0 to 1,000. And okay, we're doing a chiller right now. So in the case of a chiller, we're going to want to cool when our process variable is greater than something. It's the same deal here. It's going to be exactly the same is in this case i'm gonna the, all right the customer said he wants 350 and that's what he wants now first and they, here's where you know i got the here's my poor little heater application first time i ever messed with analog that's what the customer said it may have about been 350 but he said we had to hold a precise value and so i throw that in there and as you've already learned well, let me get back in here and simulate a value as we're going to bring it up close to 350. And let's see if we can get lucky in a bounce. Look at there. And there you go. Here, here is exactly my poor heater application. Is my light. Oops, no, there it goes. As ever mine was flickering on and off like, you know, I have known many times. But I've never seen, um, i never seen a heater burn up so fast in my life. Um, so what we've got to do is we've got to have something in there to, to stop this chattering really. And then we're, what we're going to do is we're going to use a span. But let's say the customer, he, all, he wants this, either he, want, he thinks he needs this at 350 precisely, or he only wants the operator to enter one number. We'll have another hidden number in there. So let's talk about how we can do that. Yes. Okay, Dan, we went through the limb instruction. That's not going to work. Uh, yeah, just uh, later on, you can back up a little bit here. And yeah, we went through that limb instruction. And yeah, that's going to cause you all types of grips. So here we're going to use this what we call a span. 
but we don't want the operator to enter the second value. So first we need a, we need a value here. And um, so let's make this our temperature set point. Oops, where'd I go? There it went, set point. And we're gonna need to create that. And we want this to be a real, that we can enter a decimal if we wanted to. But now what we wanna do is we're gonna add something else because what we need to do is when we have this heat, or sorry, in this case we're chilling. I gotta make sure I get this, I always get this backwards and okay. Um, we wanted to, yeah, we're going to use this subtract. We wanted to cool a little further before we shut our chiller off. Um, now first, uh, let's go and change this. It's no longer expensive pump. This is our expensive chiller. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go to our math tab and we're going to bring down a subtract instruction. And we're going to take this temperature set point that the operator is entering and we're gonna subtract it by our temperature span. And we'll create that as a real number. All right, and then we're gonna need, in this case, let's call it, well, this will be our, let's call it our temperature, I don't know, off. Temperature off. That's what I'm going to call it because I can't think of anything to call it right now. And we're going to create that. Now, same deal. We're going to do that exact same ceiling that we just were using. And now, same thing. Make sure you don't throw, there should not, almost never should there be a posing here. If you have a greater than in the top rung, your bottom one's going to need to be greater than. But now we have this temperature off setting, which is our temperature turn off setting. I probably didn't use a great description for that, but that's gonna be this bottom one. And then yeah, we're gonna put our XIC back in just like we just had it. And we're gonna bring that down. And okay, so one, let's put this in just like it is. Just so you see it's gonna do the exact same thing right now. Because, oh, I made a mistake here. Anybody catch it? Actually, in a crazy sense, this actually would work, but there's a problem here. This is only going to do this subtract when one of these statements are true. That's not good. That can cause us some issues. So either this needs to be around the whole thing or on its own rung. So I'm going to bring another rung down and I'm just going to drag this subtract. Come on, can be, my computer's choking up on me. Bring the subtract down to here. That's what I should have done. Take that branch out. That way our span is always calculated. Put that in there. Okay, and now let's put our temperature set point in because we need a set point. And our customer said 350 degrees. So there we are, and first, if you can't see it, you didn't want to notice it. Maybe you can see it in the corner here, our green light's on, but occasionally this light's blinking and you're not seeing it up here. Remember that this is not perfectly real-time representation. So if we go here, we can see this is blinking. And that's because we have our span at zero right now. now so what we gotta do is we gotta figure out a span that one is going to be acceptable to the customer, but also it's going to save our equipment. Because right now we're hammering this thing on and off. And the less on and off transitions we can make, the longer our equipment's going to last. So we want to go here. And for now, I'm just going to throw 20 in here. Again, just so we can kind of see that, that what's happening. All right, so now let's look at this. So this is 350. And we already saw this is occasionally dropping to 349. So this greater than is going 101010, which is changing this beforehand. But now we have our lower branch again. And now if it's greater than 330, this bottom greater than is going to be true. And if our expensive chiller is running, it's going to continue to run. So what this is going to do is when our temperature gets above 350, it's going to kick our chiller on. And now we have this span here, and that's going to keep us running until we drop down to 320. So we drop down, we'll bump back up on 350. Let's see if we can get kind of right. So there's 337, 343, and there we go, 350, pump comes on. 
We drop to 343 again. Pump stays on. Our, our expensive chiller stays on. And you have 331. And there, 324, it kicks back on. So that's going to keep us, it's going to save our equipment. And really, you want to almost, I hate to say it, you want as much span as possible and you can stay with intolerance. That's going to make your equipment last longer. Now, we could also use some solid state things here and some PIDs, and we have a whole lesson series on that. But right now, we're just talking about some basic pumping. And now while we're here, let's talk about what if we wanted to run a heater? Because it's going to be exactly the same. But in the case of a heater, instead of us trying to cool or us looking for a temperature to be greater, now we're just going to look for it to be less than. So let's edit this run just so we can see it. Let's change that to a less than. And then same deal. Whatever's in that top branch, if you're doing some type of latch or a seal in here, it's going to be the same thing you want this bottom one. And then let's change this description. This will be now our expensive heater. Now, the one thing you have to pay attention to is now the span in the next rung is typically you want... Now, this would actually work. This will work just fine. But what you want to do is you want the set point that the operator to enters to be when he sees that on action. It's going to keep him from asking questions. So, in this case, I want to add now. So, what we're going to do is we're going to... We're going, to heat, we're going to kick the heater on when we're below a temperature. And now we're going to keep heating until we get above a certain temperature. Let's throw that in so you can see the values change on this. It's all right, now our high is 370. Now again, I, this may be way too much range. Y'all may be like, well, who wants an oven that's between 350 and 370? I'm just making these values wide so you can see exactly what's going on. But all right, now our span is going to be we're going to start if it's greater than 350. And they're going to keep running until it's at 370. So we're at 324 right now. Our heater is running. So our heater is running. It's going to start raising our temperature. And we're going to get, there's 350. There's 356. We're still running. Now note at this point though, 356 is greater than this temperature set point. This is false. This one is true. And we're going to bump this on up. And there you go. When we hit 375, heater goes off. Now that's going to coast back down. 349. And it's going to go back up and back down. Lastly, John. PID is good if there is a delay between the input and output, especially when things can overshoot like temperature. Yeah, and you know, so, um, you know, and I, actually that's not on my list, but so you can have we'll call it a pulsed output, and you can actually have a solid state relay that's kicking on a heater. That's not that uncommon, um, as opposed to a four to 20 signal. So I should add that to the PID series. All right, so that covers the heater, that covers chilling. Okay, let's talk about a couple other things though. So yeah, one um, early on, and yeah, it's been too long now, I can't even remember who it was, but uh, somebody asked, well, where is the scale instruction? There is no scale instruction in this in studio 5000's ladder logic typically you're going to see you could see some math things done there are many ways you could do it but what you can kind of see in a way i really usually if i'm doing something like that there's several reasons to need function blocks i'll put a link to the 4 to 20 milliamp lesson series in the description till next time hey this is Till, and this is amber of tw controls we run the automation store hey thanks for finding our channel Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.